coordinate system definition is up to me. I already said that I can put the zero wherever I want. It's better than that. I can even put positive x to be whichever way I want. If I put positive x this way, that's a pretty twisted kind of definition, but maybe I want to do that. Maybe I got a whole bunch of particles and they're all traveling to the left and I would like to say everybody's going towards positive x. If I did that and I started the iguanodon at the same place, the motion is the same as before. It starts here in the real world at time t equals to 1, t equals to 2, t equals to 3. It's traveling that away. So the motion is the same, the position as a function of time is really the same, but the description in terms of my coordinate system has changed because of my convention. I would now have to plot the graph as going towards more and more negative numbers. So the number used to describe the position is arbitrary. The position is something real and physical. Let's think about slightly more complicated motion. Let me take this ball and I'm going to hold it up here, one dimensional motion, and I'll drop it. Let me start the clock at the moment that I drop it. And let me, I get to define which way is plus and which way is minus. Since it's going that way, let me call down positive What's the name of the axis? Again, it's arbitrary. I get to make it up. Let me call it the positive x direction. I can call it anything. Sometimes we call this way z, sometimes y. When you're working in one dimension, you pretty much often stick with x. This is the graph. Well, that's the answer. But this is certainly a plausible candidate. Think for a second about what this motion is. I let it go at t equals to 0. It starts at x equals to 0. And as time goes by, it's going to more and more and more positive x. That's what this graph shows. That's what this graph shows. How do I know which is the correct graph? I put this one down because I've studied the motion of this ball carefully. It's very difficult to see with your eyes which of these two graphs is correct. They're very similar. Notice the difference. At t equals to one second in the correct graph, it hasn't gone very far. In the next second, it went further. The next second, further still. This graph is getting steeper and steeper. And that's the way balls really fall. They start off slowly and they go faster and faster. We're going to talk about all of that stuff coming up soon. So once you look at this graph, you know an awful lot. You know where it was as a function of time. Let's, just for the fun of it, take a look at uh, a couple of other situations. Let me change my one-dimensional motion to be in the up-down direction along the page. And we'll set 0 up here. And let me take the iguanodon, and we'll just put it right here. And we'll call this y instead of x. And let me graph y, whoops, <laughs> y, y as a function of time. Well, there it is. At x equals 2, it's just at y equals to 2. It's just sitting there. So that's the graph. When you look at this graph, you just have to think. It means y is constant. There is no motion going on, even though it's located at y equals to 2. It's just sitting there. Well, let's try to play this game in a, another way. Let me first graph for you y versus time. And then let's try to make the motion corresponding to this graph. One, two, three, four. So here's my coordinate system. And let me put in some numbers here, too. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's really useful when you look at a graph like this to just be able to think about it and convert it from this picture to the physical motion. We started at y equals to 0. Slide that down just a little bit so you can see it. As time went by, it took one second to go four units, 1, 1,000. And then I stopped, and I'm sitting there. 1,002, 1,003, and now I'm going back. And it, took, it takes two seconds, maybe even a little more, to get back. So I'm going back more slowly. It's just a nice exercise to look, make up a couple of graphs and 
just think about what would be the corresponding motion. So that's the introduction to kinematics. We're certainly not done with the story. Kinematics is a complete description of the motion of objects. We're going to want to describe motion in ways other than graphs. We're going to want to use formulas. We're going to want to quantify other things besides where you are. We're going to want to talk about how fast are you going, what's your acceleration, what's your velocity. And ultimately, we're going to want to move into two dimensions and three dimensions. So lots of stuff to learn in kinematics, but already we've seen the basic ingredients.